Hi everybody, this is the Rambling Toffee. I hope everybody is doing this well this Friday. Um, I just thought I'd do um, an early preview for the uh, Burnley Everton game. Um, I'm doing it on video. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see it on YouTube later uh, before I do my usual podcast, which will be available uh, hopefully at some point on Monday afternoon. Um, so yes, um, big, big game coming up against Burnley away tomorrow. Um, after coming off the uh, the free wins on the bounce and playing really well and performing really well. Um, it's been fantastic to be an Evertonian at the moment. It's been nice to enjoy the football um, that we've seen, um, the goals that have been scored and, you know, keeping a clean sheet. So it's been really, really positive and long may it continue tomorrow against Burnley's. But yes, there's going to be interesting to see who takes Jared Bromfwaite's place um, at, as a centre-back. Uh, my feeling is, I know he's back in training, I believe, uh, with Michael Keane, who will take that position. Um, as much as just experience, I think he's played more games, and obviously Dice knows him. Um, I just hope he has a good, a good enough performance for that one game uh, tomorrow and doesn't make any kind of mistakes or errors, um, which we come to suspect, uh, come to expect from him, sadly. Uh, but hopefully, you never know, he might get one of those great performances that he can have. Um I was expecting so I mean the only thing he's got positive going for him is his passing he's quite a good passer so we'll see how that goes tomorrow um, if it is going to be him if not my, uh, Ben Godfrey who's not played any kind of game time for this season I don't think um, it, it's a bit difficult um, for him getting even an opportunity to you know to start tomorrow but we'll see what Sean Dyche does um, he did see in the, in the press conference that they're both uh, well, doing okay in training, and there seems to be all ready, you know, to come in if when if and when that, you know, is needed. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow. Of course, Adrissa uh, Gonaga is um out as well, book through through the five uh through a suspension through the five bookings. So we'll, you know, I think Kanana will take that position. So there's no kind of change on that. And actually, Young, of course, is still injured, and Seamus is in, James Coleman is injured as well. So I would expect Nathan Patterson to keep his position. Uh, from um, since for the Chelsea game. So, other than that, no real changes. I think it'll still be the same with, with James James Garner in you know in the midfield with Decore move further up with Jack Harrison and Dick McNeil and Dominic Calvert Lewin. So, nothing really changes on on that front. So, we just go again and hopefully we get the you know kind of performance that we've we've come to expect over the last few weeks. Uh, but it will be difficult because I know Burnley are. You know they've got they've got some results in of late, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult um, tomorrow. And I hope, I think you know, confidence wise and expectation wise, you know, everybody would think you know we got better players than Burnley. No disrespect to them, but you would think that we would get a result tomorrow um, quite easily. But it's the Premier League, and you know they're at the bottom of the table, and obviously they they're fighting to try and get themselves out of that position. Obviously, for for ourselves, is if we can get a result tomorrow, we just push ourselves further away from you know away from the relegation places and basically look upwards, which is what we suppose should should be doing. If we didn't have the good old ten point deduction, we could have been looking. We would have looked at this game, you know, as a, another opportunity to get three points and move further up the, up the table and get a European spot. But uh, you know that's not to be at this moment in time. But if we can keep on getting results like we are doing. Then you know, you know, we could we could be pushing further up there, and if we do get our some of our points back, whenever that may, whenever that day makes it takes place, when we find out about the appeal, and you know, rather no sooner rather than later, not just for for Everton, but for clubs around the relegation places and everything else, they probably need to know what what the decision is made, if we're going to be further up the table, or if we're going, or if it's just like. You know, we're going to, them ten points are going to stay as they are. Well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm hopeful that it will be rescinded to a certain amount of points that will get uh, given back. But you never know. Um, but yeah. So on that front, it's you know, I'd rather know sooner rather than later. But yeah, let's hope tomorrow we can get we can we can get the performances that we want. Um, performance we need. Uh, all the Blues going there tomorrow are going to be fantastic as per usual. It's just a shame that 
Burnley have decided that they don't want any of the A4 banners in or any of the protests banners or cards to go in. I just find it absolutely baffling. Um, and I don't know if the Premier League have had a word with them uh, to say, you know, you know, make sure that they don't bring their cards in. Because obviously it's a TV game and they don't want any kind of cameras or anything to be showing the Everton crowd, you know, with the, ban with the cards up and everything else and sitting chanting and everything else. So it looks like, you know, the Premier League are trying to stop this uh, it would be interest stop this from happening, but <laughs> Evertonians are, are, are one thing that they'll basically go in there in any way possible to bring them cards in. I I thought of a good idea. Just basically, why don't you just fold them up and put them in your pocket, and then basically pull them out when you when you're in the ground. You know, I've heard people say about t-shirts that'd be a good idea, so they can't take your t-shirt off you or anything like that. So you know, there's there's ways you know you can you can still protest you know without this happening. My concern is it'll be quite interesting to see the next away game, which will be Tottenham, to see if if Tottenham will have the same or policy that we can't, you know, not allowed to bring banners in or cards in in the same scenario. Because if that's the case, then we do know that the Premier League have been having a word with clubs that to, you know that Everton, you know, stop Everton fans from protesting and bringing these cards in and doing what they're doing. I think. If that's the case, then it just shows you everything that we want to know about the Premier League and that we're actually doing everything the right to get our uh, opinion across and our view uh, um, about what we think about the Premier League and how they are operating and how they are, um, you know, only for the few and not for the many. I, you know, I take that on, you know, take that as what I think is happening. The Premier League are, you know, corrupt. And as much as a lot of other fans out there said, what makes you think they're corrupt? Well, you can just see all the practices that have taken place over the last few years. And I've said about the, you know, the Super League, and I think everybody else has said about the Super League, why, you know, why there's no sanction there? As much as they said, oh, yes, if you do it again, you'll get points deducted and everything else. But there should have been a sanction straight away, not a measly fine or a gesture of goodwill uh, from those clubs to the, from from the from those clubs, um, you know, it's just unbelievable why you know nothing and, and nothing was happening. And what makes it even worse, and I've said this before, and I keep on banging my head, is it seems to be when that happened, you know, journalists, and then again. This is not against every journalist. There's some great journalists out there, nationally and locally, that do some wonderful articles, and you know, I can. You know, but it just seems to be, I don't know if it's their editors, and it's probably then you know, people above them who are telling them what they need to actually be writing and what to put out there, and driven by an agenda and a narrative. But as soon as those six clubs decided to. Um, you know, back down and apologise and move on. It just seems to be that the whole of the media world just decided that's it. Everything's back to normal, and and it they started to talk about what the, what players are these that you know the clubs are going to sign, how much money they're going to spend, and it just continues on, and it's just like at the moment because of Everton being you know deducted ten points, and and a lot of journalists out there have been absolutely fantastic with their reporting and feeling it's wrong and a lot of people within the within sport within Premier League and clubs and everything else a lot of them have feel that it's a little bit of a, it's too um the punishment doesn't fit the crime so it's just for me it's you know why are you not talking more about man city i think after we got the points deduction there was a period people talking about man city breaches and of course, Chelsea could be next in the firing line, and other clubs as well that have um, financial, you know, you know, breach financial fair play and, F, you know, PSRs and and like Manchester United and and you know other clubs, and we're going to hear more about them in the future. But it's like, you know, they don't they're not talking about them, and it's like at the moment the the, the transfer window will be available in January. And it's still here in Manchester United talking about. Or you know what players that they need to sign, and, and I heard the other day that because Chelsea are struggling at the moment, and they spent over a billion pound in you know 
transfer fees. And I think one or two of the players that were on the pitch against Everton were worth over £100 million. And they've been put to longer contracts. But it's now Pochettino's come out and said, oh, we need a striker. So they're likely going back in the transfer window again to try and buy this player. And they'll probably spend another 50 60 70 or even £100 million on that player. And it's like whoever that player is, just so they can sort it, they want to be up there again. And that's where the issue comes, is that we've spent money over a period of time and we've failed PC, you know, the PC, PSR. And, you know, but when you look at how it failed and breached, it's all about mitigating factors regarding the stadium, regarding uh, Gilfie Sigurdsson. And, and it's, yes, you know, with transfers and spending money, on players, but we need players to come in. We need to actually account for that because we've let players go. We've got a very weakened squad to an extent. We need to be stronger. We need to be, be competitive. And PSR, the, the what you know, the Premier League brought in was basically brought in for clubs, not just like Everton and the situation, the financial situation that we got ourselves in, and that's down to the owner and the board at the time, and it continues to be that way, but. The Premier League helped for a period of time over a um, two, three year period to try and get our finances back in order, telling us what players you know we can sign and, and players that we have to let go and everything that we had to do. That was to help us so we can sustain and get our finances back in the right order. But by putting this 10 point deduction in, as it is, and moving the goalposts through the investigation and changing the policies, what's happened is that we're, we're, we're basically being penalised and put in the position that we have put back into the relegation areas. And as much as the team are now performing and doing well, and we're, you know, we're going forward, and and it's the, the points that some people are saying the point of deduction have come at the right time. It doesn't really matter when the points deduction. We've been put backwards because now we're, we've been put back and we had to fight our way back out of it. But it's like we've been penalised. But the whole purpose of what PSR is and what the whole point of what FFP is, what the, I can't say what the, uh, you know, what the Premier League put in place is to help clubs not to go to get worse and go into administration, to go out of business, to go in that direction. But by penalising us, if if we had, if there was better clubs around us, we would have been in, we could have been relegated. That means if we've been penalised even further. That means we lose even more money. We could have been in administration. We could have been out of business, and that's still the case at the moment. And I don't want to talk about it because we're still waiting for a takeover, which is delayed a bit more. It was supposed to have been announced last week, but supposedly last week it's supposed to have heard something on the takeover, but it's been delayed. And we've not heard anything further. We don't know if, if it's going to take place or not. But at the moment, my focus is on the team. And it will always be on that because that's what it's all about. But just what we are as Evertonians. We're doing well in the field. We've got a team that seems to be performing really, really well. We've got a good coach and management. Sean Dyche, who I was a bit hit and miss with him. I didn't know if he was going to be as successful with us and the style that he plays. But it looks like, you know, he's doing a really good job. And he's getting the best out of these players and the players seem to be performing for him. And now we've got players, you know, as I mentioned about the team that we care about, we like, we love. Think about the young players, you know, young fans out there, sorry, young players, young fans out there who, you know, like ourselves, have been disappointed, you know, with the team and the players and, think, and not caring about the club and just coming to just because... They won't, you know, be there for the money. And in some senses, they are there for the money. That's what we're you know, being played as players. But the players that we have on that pitch are putting in the full commitment, you know, desire, fights and everything that you want. Dogs of war style. And they're fighting for the club and they're fighting for the fans. And you're seeing everybody coming together as one. The unity from the fan base to the players to the staff is fantastic. And it's what we've wanted. And it's going to hopefully continue on. You know, and that's what we want. But the biggest thing is seeing we caring about players. It's like, you know, I talked the other week about Mikolenko and his performance are getting better and better. And I'm, I'm genuinely in my heart and my head as well and say it's fantastic to see. 
and really pleased for him because he's genuinely a good guy, a nice nice bloke, a nice person. And he's probably great off the field. He's got all the struggles of uh, issues in Ukraine and his family and everything else. But he's been fantastic for us since he's come back from the injury. A realisation that, you know, from um, last season he's had an injury for about 18 months that he's never really said anything. And he's just come, you know, he's been fantastic and he's getting better and better. He's bulking up. He looks like he's getting better as a player and he'll just continue to go in that way. Unless, fingers crossed he doesn't get any other injury. And you've seen it with Jared Bramford where he's been on loan. He's come back. He looks like a million dollars, a million dollar player. He's just fantastic. And he's just going to get better and he's going to garner a lot of attention from the bigger clubs, the so-called big clubs out there who, you know, might want, want him in their team. He's just going in the right pathway at the moment. he got great performance, but Tarkovsky, I can go on. he got, you know, Anana showing his ability gradually. Jimmy Garner is getting better and better and he's improving. And you've seen Dwight McNeil getting back to his best. Beto will get there in the end. He's before, you know, comes out, he's a bit langly and uh, gangly and everything, but he will get better, I hope. But it's a good core unit, and you've got Dominic Cavalieri, and he's getting back to his best. He's still getting there, but he's a good outlet. And hopefully see more, you know, hopefully improve week in, week out. But there's a core, of course, we've got Lewis Dobbin. Sorry, before I go on, Lewis Dobbin is there, who's... Um, Come on and score that fantastic goal, and hope we see more of that week in week out with him. Might see him in the Carabao Cup semi final, uh, quarter final against Fulham. That's another thing that we got upcoming. We got a chance to get to the semi final, a chance, even an opportunity, to get to a final of a of a cup competition, which would be absolutely fantastic for this club, and something that you know we can all look forward to. But there's a lot of positive out there regarding the team. We seem to care more about them, and they seem to care about us. And they've got a genuine desire to want to do well for this football club. And that's all you want, really. And that's all we, we've always demanded. And I think, you know, let's see how far we go with this. Yes, we've got a very small squad. But, you know, we've got some good young players maybe coming through and giving them opportunities. Because I don't know what we're going to be like in the transfer window in January if we can afford to bring players in. Or not, I don't know, uh, because of the way things are financially at the financially at the moment. But we'll see. Uh, but on on that front, you see, we can look at positive of that. We've got a, a brand new stadium that we in a, is a year away from us moving into it, and you know that's a real positive. It's growing. It's it's fantastic. The pictures that I've seen, I put it out to the great, you know, um, Baz, eight, uh, eighteen seventy eight. Um, you know. Great drone footage, Mr. Drone, um, Mark Thomas, and again, there's many others who take that drone up there and you've been doing right from the get go. I said before, without that footage, without that stuff, uh, footage out there week in, week out, it, it, we wouldn't have been able to see how it's grown from, well, just being water in that dock to what it's become now. It's going to be fantastic when we move in there. It's also going to be a very, very sad day to move from Goodison, but um, it's also be excited. I mean, for me, in uh, the podcast that I'll do on Monday, I'll talk a bit more about memories of Goodison Park and, you know, what what game that you went to and what game, you know, stands out for you in, in, in your time going to games or even seeing it on the TV or whatever else like that. What stands out? What what What's the best play you've seen while you, you know, We'll talk about more about that on Monday um, on, in my podcast and when I review the Everton-Burnley game. Um, so, yes, it's looking at positives. Yes, there's always that thing in the back of our mind. What What's going to happen with the takeover? What's going to happen next with the points deduction? How long are they going to wait on that? Got the protests and everything else, which is really positive, actually, with the protests. More than the negative. It shows that all the fans are getting together and, you know, doing this week in week out and again hands up you know heads up to at 1878 who have organized all this and, and obviously people funding you know this to happen with the banners and the cards and even yesterday going to london and having um you know a truck outside uh, the premier league headquarters and putting it out there and trying different things and you know to keep keep this going because we have to because 
while we have to keep it in in the media in in the spotlight, the media will walk move away and go on to something else and talk about something else. We have to keep that narrative keep on top of that. We got some coverage it yesterday um, from locally and a bit from nationally as well. What we what were the eighteen seventy eight did, um, but we need to keep that going. That's probably that's why I said about the Burnley game tomorrow by banning A four cards and. Um, banner and banners going into the ground. I think it's a Premier League ploy. It's been asked by them to because it's a bit of a strange one. Why can't, why can't you take banners in? What what's it going to achieve? You know, because the cameras can actually don't have to pan onto the ground if they don't want to. But it's an interesting, you know, why they've done it. But we have to keep on top. We have to keep on going. There's a lot of things going on. I mean, there's a uh, because Andy Burnham with his letter to. Um, Alison Britton at uh, the Premier League and he's not heard anything back from them it looks like it's now gone anything like that's gone to the club and to legally because I know Will Hanrahan and I think um, a solicitor I forgot his name sorry if, if I forgot your name um, who have you know looked into this where we can actually do something about suing the, uh, suing the Premier League I think uh, but they've seen that they can actually do something about that. That's also been passed to Everton Football Club, so we'll see what happens further down the line. It'll probably happen after the appeal process has ended and see what happens there. Um, so, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting going forward. So there's a lot of things, a lot of irons in, in, the, in, in the fire. We'll see what, what happens. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, um, that's me done for today. Um, I'll be doing this more often. Um, what my plan is when I do the podcast on Monday, I'm going to be doing a video and podcast at the same time. So it'll actually, this will be on YouTube. So if you want to hear, see me, um, you can listen, see me via YouTube uh, or you can just listen to me as per usual on the podcast, which is probably a better way of doing it if you don't want to look at me. Well, I don't look at myself that often anyway. Um, but if you want with something a bit different, if you want a different avenue. So it's just a trial because going forward into the new year, um, a new podcast will be created called The Rambling Toffee Plus. And that'll be me interacting with uh, you guys um, who want to come on the podcast to talk about Everton, the now and the past and the stadium, or whatever else we want to talk about. Um, so that'll be something in the future. And I want to grow it further. But also I want to, before I go, go rambling on. As per usual, um, I want to thank everybody out there who has listened to my podcast since I started. I think it was around June. Um, it's been so much appreciated. I wasn't expecting people to actually keep on listening to me rambling on about everything Everton. Because a lot of it's nonsense. Because I start with an idea of what I'm going to talk about and then I just go off adjacent to anything else that's going on like I'm doing right now. But I want to thank everybody for keep on listening Keep on giving me the feedback and saying how well it's doing. Keep on going. I, I, I want to put a shout out to um, uh, uh, the Esk, uh, Paul the Esk, uh, because um, he's been really supportive and he's been really supportive of me. Um, he, he's enjoying the podcast and he's got his own podcast out there that he's doing really, really well. And the fact that I'm getting him saying some really good stuff about it is really good for me and many others and i'm sorry if i missed missed anybody out uh you've all been fantastic and i hope you take this on board uh how appreciated i am um and i just want to continue doing it i want to grow it i want it to become a part of my my world and where i can actually make it full time in the sense of the word that i it, i can earn from it and i can actually make money from it I, that's my motivation to make it into something special. Uh, and I want to make it for free for you guys to listen to it all the time and enjoy it. <laughs> if you want to enjoy me <laughs> uh, rambling on. Uh, but I get so much love out of it and I get so much passion out of it. And you you guys just, you know, listen to me is is fantastic. And I've, I've had over since then about a thousand listens and it um from you guys since then which is amazing for me and i never thought uh, it would ever take off the way it has 
and it continues to grow and it'll continue to grow and i just want this will be a new avenue to go down if you want to watch watch the video of me instead of listening to me um it's up to you how you want to play it but thank you again anyway on that note thank you for watching um i am back in on Mon back on monday hope everyone has a great weekend and come on your blues let's get the result tomorrow let's keep on moving up that table let's keep on proving to those corrupt so-and-sos at the premier league that we are not going to be beaten and you know we you can stick the 10 points up your you know what so take care have a great weekend i'll speak to you soon bye bye